I'm 57 and my son, 28, recently approached me upset about something his sister, 30, told him about the past that she's apparently still resentful of, although she's never spoken to me about it. My daughter has always been anxious and from a young age, around five, did a lot of weird rituals to make herself feel better. These rituals often required my husband and I to participate and we generally went along with it to make her happy. In middle school, she stopped this habit but developed a new one where she would lie frequently to me and my husband. At one point, she was almost a month behind in school and when her teacher reached out to us, we were both blindsided because she'd been deceiving us that everything was fine. She would also lie about things like who she was or having a boyfriend, which was very secretive. When she was in grade 7, I saw in her computer browser that she'd been googling OCD. I questioned her about it and she said that she thought she had it and wanted to go to a doctor, using her childhood habits as proof. I felt that she was lying again to excuse her school performance and we told her no. She intermittently argued about it with us for two years. At that point, I discovered by reading her journal that she'd also gone behind our backs to the guidance counselor at school and told the woman that we wouldn't help her. I granted her for lying again, but a few months later, we did take her to the doctor. She has more or less been in treatment since then. My son recently asked me if I really denied her medical treatment. To me, she's making it sound like I was negligent when she really was a liar and that's why we didn't take her initially. We have paid for specialists and supported her for years and I think she's putting all the blame on me slash making me look bad to my son and not taking responsibility. I'm upset with her sneaky behavior and want to confront her but my husband said to leave it. My daughter had a wonderful childhood and I hate that she's complaining about the past behind my back. We did our best and we did help her. She has never mentioned anything to me about still being resentful. Am I the asshole in this situation? Story time about how my boss severely bullied me because she was envious of me. I work at a really high-end nail salon. I'm talking about two to three hundred dollars per manicure and pedicure. So it's very high-end and our clientele is very rich. My goal has been to open my own nail salon, but it hasn't happened yet. Obviously, I don't have enough money to open it, so I needed to get a job. This new nail salon had opened up near my house. It was the prettiest thing I'd ever seen in my life, so I definitely wanted to get a job there. I went in for an interview with the owner of the nail salon. During the interview, she was really nice, but kind of gave off that Queen Bee vibe. Like, she was the popular girl and she didn't want anyone else to be popular or pretty. I got a call from her a week later and she asked me if I could do her nails to see how well I did. And when I did her nails, she was impressed. She said that I was really good and that I was hired immediately. I started working and within the first month I had the biggest clientele list. A lot of clients were asking for me to do their nails. And when other clients heard the other clients asked for me, they also started asking for me. You know, word of mouth. I was extremely proud of myself. Not only was I making a lot of money, but I was actually building a clientele base that really loved my work. Don't get me wrong, the other girls at the salon were actually really good, and so was the owner. If we were really busy, sometimes the owner would pick up any walk-in clients. And one of the walk-in clients came in and asked specifically for me. The owner told her that I was busy and that she would do her nails. That's when the girl said that she would come back whenever I was available. My boss quickly snapped at the girl and told her that she was just as good as I was. The worst part was that she said it loud enough so that everyone in the salon could hear her. The client clearly felt uncomfortable but agreed to it anyway. Later that day on my break, I could hear my boss talking in the kitchen. I decided to wait outside and see what she was saying. Sure enough, she was talking about me and telling one of the other girls that I thought I was too pretty for this job and that I didn't have any experience. She also said that I probably just watched YouTube videos in order to learn. Number one, I have 10 years of experience. And number two, it doesn't matter if you watch YouTube videos as long as you're learning. This obviously hurt my feelings and I tried not to cry. Then I realized that she did it on purpose. She was speaking really loudly and she knew that I was about to go on break. That's when I realized that she was definitely trying to bully me. The following day, I get a phone call from her telling me that I should stay home. When I asked her why, she said that she hired a new girl. And she said, in fact, don't come at all this week. And she basically hung up on me. After she told me not to come into work for an entire week because she was hiring a new girl, I decided to go in the following day and just make sure that I still had my job. I walked in and said hi to everyone. This is when, once again, I catch her talking trash about me with the new girl. She told the new girl that I thought I was better than everyone and that she should definitely stay away from me. But again, I didn't say anything just because I didn't want to have any confrontations with my boss. I waited a few seconds, knocked on the door, and entered. I asked her if I could speak to her and she said yes. I told her I couldn't stay off working for a full week. This is when she said, okay, fine, you can come in tomorrow. But you're going to have to train the new girl because she has zero experience. So essentially, I wasn't going to be doing anyone's nails, I was going to be training the new girl. This made me upset, but I knew that I needed to play my cards right. So I said yes with a smile on my face. I trained the new girl for the entire week and she actually turned out to be pretty good at nails. The following week, she was even taking on clients for gel manicures. Now, I thought this was going to make my boss upset, but it actually made her really happy. Finally, I see that everyone's starting to pack up their stuff to leave early. I asked one of the girls what was happening and she said that everyone was going to dinner together. I said, oh, okay. And she said, weren't you told? Uh, no, I was not told. I knew this was another intimidation slash bullying tactic from my boss. My boss had even invited the new girl and not me. They all left, went to dinner, and my boss pretended not to even see me when she was leaving.
The following day, I come into work and one of my clients is already waiting for me. We sit down at the table and my client begins to tell me that my boss was talking trash about me before I came in and that she even did it in front of the clients. She informed me that my boss was talking trash about my body, my hair, and my clothes and that I was basically a JLo knockoff. I quit on the spot and took all my clients with me, over 22 women. I opened my own salon two months later. I'm now her competition. She sent me a message apologizing, but I haven't responded. What should I say? Am I the asshole for making my daughter do all the Christmas cleaning because of the gift she got my wife? I've been with my wife for four and a half years. She suffered from breast cancer and we got married after she completed her treatment. This is our first Christmas together as a married couple. I have a 16 year old daughter who can tolerate but not accept her stepmom and can be passive aggressive towards her. She's done some things in the past that she should have got punishments for but my wife has been graceful and forgiving. In my opinion she's gotten out of control especially with lack of consequences. There's been tension around the holiday and my daughter decided to spend Christmas with us because her mom is going out of town. My wife was thrilled with my daughter staying with us. She prepared everything and I helped here and there while my daughter was on her phone. Christmas dinner went fine, though my wife seemed a bit upset. She refused to say what was wrong till I pressured her. She then opened the box my daughter got her for Christmas and there was a bra inside it. My wife broke down crying in the kitchen. I was fuming. I called my daughter and confronted her about the gift. She tried to say it wasn't malicious, but I disagreed and said it was purposely done to offend her stepmom and mock her illness. I decided to punish her by having her do all the cleaning after the guests left, but she tried to get out of it by calling her stepbrother to come pick her up and take her to her mom's house. I caught her at the door and kicked her stepbrother out and told her to start cleaning up immediately. She went hysteric yelling about how cruel I was to punish her on Christmas, and how insensitive my wife was to be offended by a bra. She went hysteric yelling about how cruel I was to punish her on Christmas and how insensitive my wife was to be offended by a bra. I refused to engage in her yelling matches and made sure she did all the cleaning which my wife said was a lot. She asked me to let my daughter go to her mom's house but I insisted not until the punishment was complete. My daughter called her stepbrother again and left later. She immediately called her mom who came after me for doing what I did and ruining Christmas for her. I had an argument with her about what our daughter did and she sided with her and called me an abusive and robot controlled by my wife even though my wife asked me to let it go. She got my former in-laws involved and they have been criticizing me about what I did. So am I the asshole? Okay, so the summer before my senior year, I go on a school trip to Paris and I'm super excited because I'd never been outside of the country before. I hadn't even been on a plane. My best friend was coming, but most importantly, this guy that I had a crush on was gonna be there. And he had recently just got out of a relationship and I was like, yes, this is my time to shine. I'm literally gonna be in the city of love. My life is gonna be a motherfucking movie, bitch. So the trip was about two weeks, almost two weeks long, and we spent a majority of that time just the two of us together. We didn't spend time with our respective friends, so, and this, normally this wouldn't be weird if we were close, but we weren't. So it didn't make sense for us to be spending this much time together unless there was something going on, and I wasn't the only one who thought this, because we would come back from spending free time in the city, and the teacher chaperones would be like, are you two having fun? <laughs> and I would be like, yeah we're having a lot of fun <laughs> i was like they all know i was like i'm not the only one who thinks this i'm not crazy i'm not delusional that's to the very last day of the trip i make an innocent little joke about us going on a date and it was not well received found out that he does not like me <laughs> was obviously devastated <laughs> i was like let me kill myself <laughs> um i cried the whole way home which was like an eight hour flight and a four hour bus ride which was so slay of me and we kind of started talking a lot less. You know, he, I, he would still talk to me, and obviously I wasn't over it, so I would keep talking to him. He would give me a little bit of attention, and I would eat that shit up. It would sustain me for way too long. Uh, I did not respect myself <laughs> during this period of time. Still don't, but, you know, work in progress. Uh, so anyway, cut to January of 2018. I'm back home after my first semester of college. It's my birthday. I'm having a birthday party at my friend's apartment. I'm super drunk. He is obviously invited because I'm messy. He waltz in and I decide this is the perfect time to verbally assault him. So I go up to him in front of everyone and I'm like, you're a bitch. Do you fucking love me on? Fuck you. And he's like, yeah, I'm really sorry I led you on. I don't have a better response. I just can only apologize. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, it's okay. I can forgive, but I don't forget. Never forget 9-11. Um, and so cut to the end of the night. Um, everyone is either drunk, passed out in a different room or hooking up with somebody in a different part of the apartment or whatever. And so there's just the two of us sitting on the couch. One thing leads to another and he leans in to kiss me and I go, wait. Hey. 
He's like, you don't like me. What? And he was like, yeah, that doesn't mean we can't have some fun. And I was like, do I ruin my life right now? I was like, yeah, let me ruin my life. I was like, you're all right. So we proceeded to hook up. And um, at the end of it, I thought it'd be really funny to say, so, like, what are we? That moment was like roaches scattered and he promptly left. But the moral of the story is, um, don't go get the dick if you know it's not right for you. Story time about how I crashed my dad's really expensive car. So a little background information. My mom had just got remarried to my stepdad three years ago. And he was this rich asshole who owned a bunch of food trucks and thought he was the shit. Well, at the time I also had a boyfriend. And we had only been dating for like a month and a half. But my boyfriend would always beg me to let him drive my stepdad's car. And I always said no because that was like his child. Like he had children. He could care less about them. His car was more important. Anyway, so the one weekend my parents are out of town and one of my friends was throwing a graduation party. So that whole day my boyfriend was trying to talk me into taking the car and I already knew where my stepdad hid the keys. So I just decided I wouldn't drink that night and I would just take the car. He kept asking me if he could drive, but clearly I said no because this kid literally told me that he crashed the first two cars that he had. So we get to the party, we're having a good time, and one of my friends tells me that everybody's taking pictures with my car outside. Like for part two. Part two about how I crashed my dad's very expensive car. So like I said, everybody's taking pictures of the car, but I decided to let it go at first. I mean, there was one point where I went outside just so that way I could kind of let everybody know, hey, you're taking pictures with my car. Well, half an hour later, my boyfriend and I decided to leave and he's obliterated. Like we probably got 50 feet from her house and then I had to stop the car so that way he could get out and throw up in somebody's yard. Anyway, so he gets in the car. We're on the way back to my house and my house was like a 20 minute drive away. Well, we were five minutes from my house. At this one intersection, I get a green light and I go to make a right and I accidentally hit a car turning out of the bar parking lot. So I'm literally freaking the fuck out. And my boyfriend's in the seat next to me crying for some reason. So the guy in the other car calls the cops. The cops show up. They call my stepdad and my mom. My boyfriend went to the hospital. He had alcohol poisoning. Well, my boyfriend told his mom that it was all my fault and I'm grounded for six months. Story time about how I was dating the school shooter. Yeah. So a little background information. I was a sophomore whenever this all happened. And it was around October. Well, the one day I was sitting at lunch with my group of friends, we're all sitting there having a good time when one of my friends dares me to go over and sit with this one kid. And he was sitting alone, he was kind of shy, and of course I did because they had offered me $10, guys. Can't beat that. So I go over there, we start talking, and I realize that he's actually really nice. And he's really hot. I never really saw what he looked like because he was always wearing hoodies during school. Anyways, we started hanging out more and eventually he said that he liked me and we started dating. The relationship seemed pretty perfect. Well, six months in, I think he started to trust me more. Because he had told me about this one group of girls that he absolutely hated. This group of girls just happened to be my friends. I didn't tell him that I was friends with these girls because they were considered controversial. Like for part two. Part two about how I was dating the school shooter. Like I said, I had never told him that I was friends with these girls because they were controversial. But he would go on for hours about how much he hated these girls. He went as far to say that he wanted to kill them. I didn't think anything of it at first because him and I had more of a sarcastic sense of humor. But he started to sound more and more serious every time that he would talk about it. Well, after us dating for 10 months, he calls me the one night. And he starts telling me about how he's going to shoot up the school. He had told me his entire plan of how he was going to do this. Now, he must have thought that we were like ride or die relationship, when in reality, I was recording everything that he was saying. After we got off the phone, I wrote an email to all of the office staff in my school, but I fell asleep and never finished the email. I woke up the next morning, finished it. I had texted my friends not to go to school that day. I had already missed the bus. I rode my bike to school that day. I ran to the principal's office, nobody was there, and that's whenever I heard shots in the hallway. Crazy story time about how I found my aunt and my boyfriend hooking up at a family function. So every year, my mom and stepdad would have a Christmas party and everyone from both sides of the family would come. And I also invited my boyfriend. And at this time, my boyfriend and I were both juniors in high school. So everybody came to the party and everything was going good. Well, like an hour into the party, all the adults were super drunk. 
So before we all opened gifts, I decided to help my mom clean up dinner. So while I'm washing the dishes, I look over and my aunt and boyfriend are talking a lot. And she started to get really touchy with him, but I didn't think anything of it because she was super drunk. So after I'm done cleaning up, we all start opening gifts. And my boyfriend goes up to my room to go get his phone off the charger. And after he went upstairs, my aunt was like, oh, I need to go throw up. So about 10 minutes goes past and my boyfriend's still up in the room grabbing his phone. So I went to check on him. And I walk upstairs to see my aunt and my boyfriend laying on my bed making out. Like for part two. Part two to how I caught my aunt and my boyfriend hooking up at a family function. So like I said, they are laying on my bed making out. Doors wide open. They don't even bother to shut the door. And both of their shirts are off. And I think I should just put in here, my aunt is like 28. She's on my stepdad's side. She's really young. So they look up and my aunt's just like drunk as fuck looking at me. And she's like, do you want to join? Like, bitch, what the fuck? So I'm just like shook. And I start screaming. Everybody rushes up the stairs. And my mom pushes me out of the way and sees my boyfriend and my aunt laying on my bed with their shirts off. So my mom starts screaming at everybody so my mom calls the cops says that an adult is touching an underage boy and she calls his mom tells her what happened so my boyfriend and i broke up so that spread around the whole school and word got out that they actually started seeing each other story time about how my boyfriend cheated on me with a 17 year old girl so when summer started i started working at this new job and i had a really good connection with one of my co-workers and he was 28 years old so we started talking but I would get mad at him a lot because he would ignore my messages asking to hang out. And on top of that, every time that we got done with work, we would all go sit and eat and he would sit next to this one girl. And by the way, she was 17. And I could see them flirting all the time. Well, finally, once summer ended, she moved away. And then I felt like I had a real chance to start dating him. So we started hanging out a lot and hooking up a lot. After a few months, I started taking our relationship serious. Well, apparently not for him because there was this girl on his phone that he had been texting a lot. So weirdly enough, after that, I get a DM from the girl that he would always flirt with at work. And she asked me if I was dating him. And I said, yeah. And then she goes, oh, well, he's been texting me a lot. So then I blocked her and went and hooked up with one of his friends that night, like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend was cheating on me with a 17-year-old girl. So like I said, I hooked up with his friend that night, but I didn't tell him for a couple months because he would always say that we weren't dating, even though we were basically in a relationship. So we were doing really good until around Christmas time. So after he gave me my gifts, which was socks and a candle, he left for Massachusetts. I don't know if I said that right. And a month before this, I had unblocked the girl that he was flirting with. So weirdly enough, after he left, she DM'd me, basically asking if I was still dating him again. And I was like, yeah, why? And she goes, hmm, well, I need to tell you something. He actually took my virginity, and he's been sending me a lot of gifts, like a record player and albums, and we've been talking on the phone every night. So when I confronted him about it, he said he felt bad for her because he took her virginity. So after that, I confessed to hooking up with his best friend and called him a child predator.